Welcome back to the Daily Truth Report. We have a returning guest. I've been very excited about this. It, it kind of came together just this morning. I got a message from Mr. Bo Polney, who is on the screen there. His camera is not working. And uh, so he will, uh, if we have some issues here, we're going to try and get him patched in. But if it doesn't work, uh, I just want to let you know up front that we're, we're dealing with some camera issues. Uh, and Bo is coming to us. Bo, can I can I say your location, or are you coming to us from an undisclosed location today? Yeah, no, you can go ahead. We're fine. <laughs> uh, Switzerland, I believe, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we're in Switzerland. We just uh, we left Israel, and now we're in Switzerland. And uh, um, we did some incredible stuff in Switzerland just the past couple of days. And yesterday was a rather uh, historic day here in Switzerland at the top of uh, top of Europe. So we can talk about that in a few seconds. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a second. And uh, Bo has assured me that he's not over there in Europe meeting with George Soros or the WEF. Is that <laughs> do I have that right, Bo? Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> okay, unless unless you're over there to talk some sense into him, and then it'd be all right. But uh, I did see a sign at the airport, or actually, I did see a sign at the train station for Davos. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, I'm sure your invite is coming. It's just it's just in the mail. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we we like I said, this came together just briefly, uh, or really quickly here this morning. Uh, I had a message from Bo and. We've been wanting to get him back on. Obviously, his travel schedule is crazy right now, and and taking he's taking some well deserved time to go over and see Israel and some other sites. But uh, amazing that he's taking some time to to talk with us. So we've been wanting to have him on for a couple of weeks, and it finally happened. So we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to try and keep this uh, relatively short, but we've got a lot to cover. And and first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to your slides, Bo. I'm gonna put these up. There we go. And then before we even start, we have. A, I just want to say, in case anyone's wondering, we're going to talk about September 24th. We're going to talk about October 24th. We're going to talk about November 24th. And we're going to talk about a bunch of other things. But one of the things I want to talk about just right out of the gate, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to have Bo on today, is because I want to talk about what happened on November 7th and 8th. Now, that was the election. But it was it was also it was the election, but it was also a date that Bo had been telling his private subscribers in his newsletter about. And and I'm always real careful not to to give too much information out because we have to be respectful of those subscribers. But I do want to show you one thing, and we're going to talk about this later in the show too. But you have to see this right here. I've clipped out just a part, and then we're going to talk about this later too, a lot more. But look at this. So Bo had been telling his subscribers all the way back, and this is all documented. You can go in and read it all the way back to October. He was saying. Hey, watch out. I see a big downturn in my cycles, and it's going to be right at the election, November 7th and 8th. And he says, watch out because Bitcoin could have a sudden crash. Well, boy, oh boy, did we have a crash this week. And we'll talk more about what that crash looked like. And then look at this. He says, one more. Look at this one. This is from his November 1st newsletter, so seven days before it happened. Bitcoin could suddenly break below the $19,000 support line and crash into November 8th. Well, we had a huge crash. You're, even if you don't follow crypto, you've probably heard it on the news. You've probably heard the names FTX. You've heard the name SBF, Sam Bankman Freed. We're going to talk about those. I think we are just in the early stages of one of the biggest scandals and biggest crashes. And, and we'll break some of that down today because I want to get Bo's thoughts on it. But I think Bo nailed to the day, really to the uh, almost to the hour of, of when we suddenly crash down. And it's so nice to have Bo's newsletter because when it happens, you're not panicking and and you know you know this was expected. So Bo, that was a long introduction for me. From this point forward, it's gonna be more about you in this interview because that's what people wanna hear. So I'm going back to your slides and I'm gonna let you take us through, but, but let's talk dates, let's talk politics, let's talk elections and let's talk gold, silver and crypto. Sure. Yeah, actually, that was very funny, the time point. It was rather, it was kind of busy for me because I was actually just leaving um, Israel and, you know, I was with Jonathan Kahn on a tour there. And oh, then wow. from there, I, yeah, so that was just an incredible, incredible experience we had in, in, in Israel. Wow, that's all I can say. And then from Israel, we're traveling um, to Switzerland and that was right at that time point. So I'm at the airport writing the update saying, you know, it's just how fun it was to watch this because we were all of the subscribers, we were waiting for the crash, and it happened on the exact day that we were forecast, that the cycle forecast. So the cool thing is, you know, when you know the cycles and a market crash happens like that, there's nothing to worry about because it's part of the cycle, right? And so and like I write in my news newsletter the cycles precede events. So we knew there was a crash coming. We didn't know what was going to happen. 
And then when the crash happens, you find out what the events were, like you just mentioned, the events that caused the crash. But how amazing is this, right? And so the crash was, you know, the scary part of people that, you know, that weren't expecting it. All of our subscribers were. And so we were actually, we, we had buy, buy targets and things like that on the crash. So it was like, we were like three weeks preparing for this event. And now that it's happened, there's another cycle point that's coming. And we know, so all of our subscribers know there's another very important cycle time point coming here in the you know, not too distant future. And so now we're all preparing for that one. But how fun was it to watch this, Noah? unfold right in front of us and we were prepared two to think three weeks in advance we were waiting for this event yeah it was very good I, I was watching it and quite frankly it looked like we were going to break up for a while and i i was kind of uh you know i don't even know why i doubt you anymore but i, I was kind of wondering uh, yeah i didn't think we were going to just suddenly drop below nineteen thousand, but it was fast and violent and it was a big drop and uh, i think that the uh, it's the fallout is still happening so uh, it is always comforting to be able to see your newsletter in advance. Right. You know, so that's the, the point of cycles, right? It takes the stress out of life. You know, you when you know something's happening and you know it's coming in advance, you prepare for it. When it happens, you act. Once you've done acting, then you sit on, the, you sit on your hands again and you just wait for the next cycle move. So, yes, there's another very big cycle, an important cycle move coming. So we're waiting for that. But it's if there's no stress in any of this, that's the important part. That's the truly awesome part. There is zero stress in, in the cycles right now. We're simply just waiting for life to play out for things to unfold and you know the cycles are already set in stone we're just waiting for the time points to hit so yes a very exciting uh time points you know very exciting month we're sitting at uh, noah you know where we're in this city key critical month of november so we can talk about this in our presentation uh and so you know let's get into the presentation but uh, you know and with that presentation uh, i want to let you know that yesterday my wife and i um Noah, this was like, I, I can't believe this happened, but I, when the Lord talks to me, I hear things. Usually it's first thing in the morning when I'm waking up. And all I heard yesterday morning on the 12th of November was, take your camera with you, take your camera with you, and let, and then the second phrase was, let my people go. Because that day I was going on a tour to the top of Europe with my wife and we were going to, you know, explore this awesome, you know, place at the very, very top of the hill. So little did I know why I'm taking my camera with me or, you know, what the importance of this excursion was only to find out that when we get to the top of the hill or as we're driving there, the prophetic word was let my people go. Well, why am I hearing that? Well, this is, I'm going to play this video for you, Noah, and it's, it's, it's incredible how God put the pieces together, but there's no way, there's no way that I would have known to take my camera and the events that were about to unfold that day and how it all played out. And at the end of the day, what actually happened? There's no way I would have known to do this. And yet it happened. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. We are in Switzerland. As you can see in the background, it is actually spectacular, undescribable other than just being here, feeling the presence of the Lord and the beauty of his nature that he created for us to enjoy. So I hope you are blessed by seeing this video and we love you. And here we are. Welcome. All right. So what we want to talk about is something very special. Today, my wife, Sophia, and I, we are at the very top of Europe. This is crazy. We are at the very, very top. We're over 11,700 feet above sea level right now. So truly incredible where we're at right now. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is this morning, I got a word from the Lord. Basically, the Father said, take a camera, make a video. So then as we're driving with a tour guide up the hill, I, I pull out the brochure to look and try to analyze, you know, what is so special about being up here uh, this high up in Europe. And it's rather fascinating because, you know, when you go back and study Exodus, what did Moses say to Pharaoh? More importantly, what did God tell Moses to say to Pharaoh? He told Moses, said, let my people go. Truly incredible words spoken by Moses that were given to him to tell to Pharaoh. Now, why does that matter? Well, because something really incredible is going on right now where we're standing. What is a symbol and representation of Egypt? They have sphinxes standing at the forefront of Egypt. You walk through the sphinxes to get into Egypt. And then Moses passed the sphinxes and he walked to Pharaoh and he said, What? Let my people go, saith the Lord. You would not believe this, 
But on the way up the hill, the place that Sophia and I stand right now is called the Sphinx Observatory. Truly incredible. This is not a coincidence. We stand today at the Sphinx Observatory, and behind us, which is incredible, is the rest of the world. We are at Europe, the top of Europe. Behind us is England, London, Europe, and then beyond that, the Atlantic, and then beyond that, the United States. So we call out to the world today, to the pharaohs of this world, let my people go, saith the Lord. The Lord of hosts has spoken. The Father has spoken. Let my people go. And why are mountains so powerful, so important? Because if you study scriptures, it's on the mountains where God shows up. God showed up to Moses at Mount Sinai. When you study the prophets of Baal, what happened with the prophets of Baal? You had Elijah challenge the prophets of Baal. He said, show me your God. And nothing happened. And then Elijah called down God. And what happened? The fire came. And the prophets of Baal were destroyed. And where is Jerusalem built? It's on a hill. So why the people can look up. So today we stand at the highest point of Europe. The highest point of Europe at the Sphinx Observatory, shouting out to the world, to the pharaohs of this world, the word of the Lord, let my people go, saith the Lord. And the most crazy part, which is not even in the video, know this is the most incredible thing. I stepped off the elevator into the building, and you know the building specifically was the Sphinx. We stepped into the Sphinx at 1.24 p.m. Don't, wow. <laughs> the only way that could have happened was an act of God. Oh, that is, that's amazing. This is, so this is slide one. There's a link on this, but we're right here. Um, we've got, both got a, it's a QR code. That's what you're seeing on the screen. You don't need a special app. You just get your camera app out and you point your camera at it and it's going to give you a link to click on. That's going to give you these slides. If, if it's easier for you just to click on a link, I also will put the link right below this video, wherever you're watching this. So uh, I always tell people, get these slides, download them. They're free. Keep them and watch them later on or keep them in your records and go back and look at them because there's so much in here. We're not even going to get into probably half of it, but it is every slide is so beautifully done. And there's information. I miss stuff on these pages that's hidden in there that, that you've got all sorts of stuff crammed in. So go ahead and grab the slides and follow along. Perfect. Thank you, Noah. So next we go to page three. So page three, we've said this over and over and over again. God is two things. He's got his love and his judge. Period. Okay. So we are now waiting for Isaiah 61, the last line, the day of vengeance. That's it. God has shown his mercy to the world. He loves his creation. He loves us. These people, the evil ones that are doing what they're doing, you know, the present day pharaohs, they've had their opportunity to change from their wicked ways, to turn from their wicked ways. They've chose not to. Look what they just did. They're not going to turn from their wicked ways. And so now we're about to experience the Red Sea miracle. The, that what happened for the time of Pharaoh and Moses was the, was the exodus. We are about to witness the great exodus, the world wide exodus therefore that is why i was just yesterday at the top of europe proclaiming to the world with my wife let my people go say it the lord when moses did it it was in israel but now we have a worldwide babylonian system so that's why this had to happen at the top of the world the top of europe and it, it is now it has happened. It is complete. So all we're waiting for is a day of vengeance, the Red Sea miracle for the great exodus of this world. So we are here. This is going to be truly incredible what's about to happen. Any moment now in time, we're going to see the collapse. You know, the next page, the collapse as stated will be the victory needed to stop the furthering of this evil regime. So a historic, historic collapse is coming, and it's going to be directly related to the U.S. dollar. Uh, just really quickly, I want to. You don't. You've always historically said, "Hey, I'm not a prophet. I, I am. I am a guy who analyzes time cycles and biblical cycles." And so, this is really one of the first presentations I've heard from you where you really felt like God gave you a prophetic word and something you were supposed to declare. And, and I, I think that's amazing. I, I didn't want to gloss over that too much, but 
I, I still don't think you call yourself a prophet, but we all have uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit and, and and he will sometimes give us prophetic words. So is, is that, I know I'm going to get questions on that. Is that how you summarize that? We don't need an intermediary. Okay, that's the point, right? The, the church, you know, the perfect example, the Catholic church gives you an intermediary, the Pope. So, you know, you can't talk to God based on the Catholic religion. You got to talk to God through the Pope. That's an intermediary system. Okay, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We have direct relationships with God, the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, is, is the intermediary and allows us to communicate with God, the Father, and Jesus. That's how it works. The best analogy of that would be a messenger, period, just a messenger of God. You know, when you sleep, when you are in quiet time, in peace time, God communicates with you. There's no reason why God can't communicate with you. You've got the whole, if you've accepted Christ into your heart, you got the Holy Spirit. Why can't God talk to you? How do I make these PDF presentations? There's an anointing on them. I get pieces. There's pieces of puzzles in these PDF presentations so I can illustrate to the world what is important, what is coming. So I hope that answered the question. No, but yeah, that was when I woke up, I knew crystal clear that I am, <laughs> there's a reason to go to that mountain. There's a reason to bring the camera. And then when I found out that it's all about specifically about the Sphinx and what happened with Moses, it blew my mind. And the fact that I stepped off the elevator into the Sphinx at 1.24 p.m., there was zero possibility that could have ever happened, but it did because it was by biblical, by godly design. Oh, that's very good. That's that's why we love having Bo on. I think that was a wonderful explanation, and that, that really is how we're supposed to live, and, and that's that's a, a daily Christian walk in life and and you should be able to we don't we don't need an intermediary and so that's that's fantastic thanks for that explanation all right now take us to everybody wants to know about this all of the 24s we've had september 24 october 24 november and even a bunch before that i've got the slide up and why don't you walk us through it right so you know the 24 is a powerful number again what time did i get off the elevator 1 24 p.m it's a prophetic number. It's four, two, one backwards. One, two, four. It's death to life. We've talked about this in numerous presentations, but that's the big picture of time. And so 24 is a very powerful number for God. All I know is that it's important things happen on the 24th. That's all I can tell you. You know, some perfect example, you know, Russia signs a military agreement with Saudi Arabia on August 24th last year. The Ukraine-Russia war starts on February 24th. Russia accepts rubles for oil. On March 24th, Roe v. Wade is June 24th. The pound plummets, the British pound plummets on September 24th. And then just last month on October 24th, I was possibly thinking we could get a stock market collapse. We didn't. What we got was the U.S., uh, the U.K. elected Rishi Sunak on that exact date. And Noah, you put some articles on this. Tell me, you know, what's the importance of Rishi Sunak? Go ahead. Yeah, you got to see this. I'll I'll put the link to this down below, but we'll show it on the screen right here. We wrote this two weeks ago, so that would have been right at that date. Uh, if you don't know about this guy, this guy looks like he's pretty bad news. Looks like he's Masonic. Look at this. So the, here's the picture. This is the only picture that was splattered everywhere in the media of him when he was elected prime minister. So first of all, you got to understand the history. He He comes in, but he's replacing the outgoing prime minister who only had the job for 45 days. The, the shortest tenure of any British prime minister in the history of that country. She was in and then she was removed. Why? Because they had to make room for their new Masonic prime minister, this guy right here. And look at the picture they point out. They, they always love the symbolism, the three and the it's three. Called, the it's called hiding things in plain sight. That's exactly right. And so they put that out there. It's, it's a little symbol to their people to let everybody know. And they hide it right in plain sight, walking between. And it's not just the 33. So. For those of you who don't know, the, the Masons and, and these people, they love these numbers. 33 is their, their favorite number. They use it for very demonic and evil purposes. And and so here they are putting it out there. They also love the two pillars. And I've done a big write-up on this. You can scroll down here. I put all of the explanation in here about what that stuff means. It goes back centuries. But they love the two pillars and the number 33. And look how they got that all in one picture. It's, it's, it's almost impressive if it wasn't so evil. 
If they hide everything in plain sight, but basically, um, and also that day, I think or a day or two after he got elected, he actually posted on Twitter, it's time for the new world order, and then he deleted it. So, you know, that, that actually, I have a copy of that tweet somewhere as well, too. So that happened. So this is a very, very powerful time point. That's all I can tell you. And so, you know, the next 24 is November. There it is. Yeah, so the next 24, after October 24th, this is November 24th. And again, we've talked about the dollar. You know, page six talks about the dollar. The dollar has been the root of all evil. They have, with the U.S. dollar, they've been able to basically buy, pay off, control all of humanity. Um, they did it in 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard. With the money system, they've been able to buy and pay off anybody and everything. Look what just happened on the 7th and 8th of November. How did it happen with the money? It's the money, it's the money, it's the money. And so page seven, we're about to see historic unfold right in front of our face. So we you know we got a, the prophetic word of Kim Clement, the brothers of Goliath stand in glee. We will cripple you. This is Revelation, it also can be confirmed with Revelation 17, 17. It says, for God has put into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind. So the brothers of Goliath are about to come together. They're going to be of one mind, and they're going to take on Goliath, the U.S. dollar. We're about to see the collapse of the U.S. dollar. Why will it happen this year? Because page 8, it's the year of Jubilee. It's Leviticus 25, verse 10. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all of its inhabitants. When I say all, I mean all. We're going to see a historic year on the financial system, the collapse of the U.S. dollar, which has been Babylon, the control system of the world. That's going to lead to the great wealth transfer on page nine. And we're going to see historic financial events unfold. Page 10 is very clear. That takes us to a single day. There's only a single day that God needs. And in a single day, the kings of the earth will weep and wail, fulfilling Revelation 18, verses 8 and 9. This year is going to be crazy before it ends. We are in the year 2022. This is the year of Jubilee. The next page is the Black Horse. So Year of Jubilee is going to be coupled directly with the third seal of Revelation. I mean directly the third seal of Revelation manifesting, which is a black horse which represents death, the angel of death. This is crazy, but this is what it means. It means the angel of death is coming for these people. I don't know how it's going to play out. All I'm telling you is a black horse who represents the angel of death. The rider's got scales in his hands, indicating that a complete rebalancing of the financial system, as you know it. You know, the last time we saw this was a writing on the wall. Many, many tekel of Sharsim, which was by translated... Your kingdom has come to an end. You've been weighed in the balances, and your kingdom will be given to the Medes and the Persians. Noah, all I'm saying is these are historic times. I was at the top of Europe with my wife yesterday proclaiming, like Moses, let my people go. We're here. Something is about to blow. Page 12 takes us to... November 24th. This is a two and a half thousand year scripture specifically describing Thanksgiving, November 24th. And on the 24th day of the 11th month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Zechariah. I have returned to Jerusalem with mercy. My cities shall again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort Zion. Why will the Lord comfort Zion? Because the Lord is with us. And if the Lord is with us, who could be against us? Why is the Lord with us? Because we as a nation have overturned Roe v. Wade on June 24th. So we are stepping into now a new era. It's about to fully manifest. We got the prophetic word of Kim Clement, hypnotic November. Today is the 13th of November. We didn't mention that. Today is the 13th of November. We have the prophetic word of Kim Clement, hypnotic November. And you can chime in here in one second, Noah, because the Galatians 6 verse 7 states, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. 
for whatever a man soweth, thus shall he reap. And what that means is sowing seeds means planting them. And so when you plant a seed, if you plant an evil seed, it will grow evil. In this case, Thanksgiving represents if you planted evil seeds, the evil will come to the one that planted that evil seed. Go ahead, Noah. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say thank you for bringing up the date. It is November 13th when we're recording this, 2022. And I always like to read a few prices. Bitcoin is at $16,500. XRP is at $0.35. Cents. I think that will soon be a historic number. Uh, and uh, that's not Bo's opinion. That's mine, although it might be Bo's. You'll have to get the newsletter to find out. We are in the new era. We are a, we are waiting for we are still waiting for that one day. We're waiting for the hypnotic November. And, and actually, I think we're in it. I want to I want to switch here real quick, but I, I really want to get your thoughts on this. I, I was so excited you were coming on today because I want to ask you about this whole FTX Sam Bankman Fried. I know you've been traveling. Maybe you haven't seen a lot of it yet, but this thing I have a feeling this is shaping up to be the thing that is going to be the catalyst for the crash, for the rebalancing, for the. For, for the scandal being uncovered. Uh, this is, uh, this guy is a real character, Kim.com, but he's, he's, he, he's right about a lot of things. So sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. If you haven't been following the story or if you've heard these names and you don't understand what's going on, it's kind of complex, but he does a wonderful job of simplifying it here. Here's what it's looking like. We don't know for sure, but here's what caused the crash. Bo looks at time cycles. He doesn't always know what the event's going to be or the reason for it, but he knows there's a crash coming on November 7th and 8th, and he nailed it. But it turns out this is this is looking to be the reason why. This company right here was a, a crypto brokerage company, FTX, and they had sponsors like Tom Brady. They were on a Super Bowl ad. They had Larry David. They had all of these people. And it turns out the whole thing either was a Ponzi scheme or was very close to a Ponzi scheme or was mismanaged, grossly mismanaged, or it was just an outright fraud. We don't know, but it has totally gone bankrupt. The U.S. version and the international version, it's gone suddenly. That's what caused the crash this week in Bitcoin. But as bad as that is, that looks to be one piece in this puzzle. And it looks like a massive money laundering operation. So you get your tax dollars that we all pay in. We, we kill ourselves at jobs and we work like crazy only to give 50% of that to the tax man, 40% of it, 30% of it, whatever you're in whatever tax bracket you're in, you pay that like a good American citizen. And then what happened this past year? Where did billions upon billions just keep going? Everywhere you, every time you open up the news, another 80 billion going to the Ukraine. Right. Well, then the Ukraine gets it. And we, we've we been asking all year long, where is that money going? What are they doing with it? How many tanks do you need to buy? You can't buy that many tanks for $80 billion over and over and over. It looks like that money, and this these are published reports. I, we're not making this up. There are news articles now coming out that, that the money then went into this exchange that appeared to be a Ponzi, a front, a fraud. We don't know. It went in there, and then guess who was the second biggest donor to the Democrat Party right behind George Soros? It was the founder of this exchange, Sam Bankman Freed. All of these wow. things are documented, and so he gives the money back. It goes back to the Democrats. Bo, I have a feeling this may be your hypnotic November. It may be the thing that people can't believe this was truly happening, but it's starting to be documented. I don't know, and I know you don't know the events, but I have a feeling this thing is about to blow wide open. The Democratic Party finds itself in the middle of the biggest financial fraud case in U.S. history. A cryptocurrency company, you know, like the Bitcoin things, just lost $2 billion of its customers' money. They didn't just lose it in the market, it's just gone. Someone stole it. And the company called FTX just went bankrupt after they blew up $32 billion. Hi, my name is Sam, and this is my story. Sam is 29 years old only, but Sam has $22 billion. And he wants to donate all of it to charity. And the charity was the Democratic Party. Look at Sam right there behind George Soros. Ukraine was an investor in FTX. And what did FTX do with the money Ukraine invested? Well, they plowed it right back into the Democratic Party. Democrats send money to Ukraine. Ukraine sends money to FTX. And FTX sends money to the Democrats' campaigns. And no one noticed a thing. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. What is it in the Bible? You know, the truth will set you free. What is the truth? It's the exposure of events, right? So these, it's the light. Events are about to unfold 
that are going to be mind blowing, you know, which people are, which Kim Clement called hypnotic. But remember, when God intervenes, right, it's not just event, financial events, it's going to be earthquakes, volcanoes, the earth is going to shake. Um, you know, the prophetic word was a land will rumble and evil will crumble. Well, what does that mean? It means that the land's going to shake. So do expect shaking, earthquakes, volcanoes, things just to go off across the world. And Kim Clement also prophesied about that. And I know Lois Vogel Sharp also referenced, you know, earthquakes and volcanoes as well, too, as well as, as well as several other prophets. So all I'm saying is that there's a lot more than just financial events are going to go down. But the collapse is the event that changes the world because the financial collapse of the dollar and the financial system is going to therefore need someone a david to come back and rebuild what was broken and the collapse does not go down on the on god's anointed That's so, so the good. anointed comes in to rebuild what god destroyed so again i've stated on, on many interviews it's the biden crash god will get all the glory because the events that are about to happen are going to be so so incredible so a, 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 enormous that only they can be manifested by that of god and the world will know it but the events will be so horrific or, or incredible that they're going to need someone to come back and rebuild it because we need an economy to to, to, to live in you know it's it's going to be so critical to try to continue the transactions but you know this event's going to be so in, incredible financially uh, that something huge has to happen on the back end to come back and rebuild and so that's why we're going to have, you know, worldwide celebrations coming after the collapse. That's fantastic. Very exciting. We are waiting for that day. We've got another big 24 coming up, 1124. And the, what I'm seeing in the news, it looks like that could just be an absolute explosion. Bo talks about you the know, land and also, only, If I can just interrupt for a minute, remember, and when God intervenes, right, when the blessings come, you know, I want to read Malachi, it's on page 13. But when you read Malachi in the bottom left corner, it's very interesting what the words are. Bring the full tiding into the storehouse, that there might be food in my house. I will pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Your vine in the field shall not fail to bear. All nations will call you blessed. Meaning that the blessings that are coming are going to be so enormous, it's going to be mind-blowing how large these prices that we're going to see in precious metals. It's going to be truly historic. And so, you know, gold, gold and silver have never had value because we've been in a Babylonian money system, which is which is a lie and a fraud and based on paper, right? And so when God intervenes, the financial system will collapse. And God's money, Haggai 2, verse 8, the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord, are going to explode in value. And for a season, for a good good many years, cryptocurrencies are going to be awesome. Why? Because they're going to move super quick vertically. You know, when you understand blockchain, it's honest ledger. What does that mean? It means that nothing's hidden. Precious metals, you have to mine. Cryptocurrencies, you got to mine. And when you transact in cryptocurrencies, it's open ledger. I mean, the world can see the transactions. So nothing's a fraud. So all I'm saying is that a huge financial event is about to unfold. We have another date coming very soon here. You know, within the cryptocurrency cycles, something big's about to blow. That's all I can tell you. The cycle nailed and again i don't want the glory for this but god shows me how to interpret the cycles but the cycle in nailed to the exact day the crash of november 8th there wasn't one person in the world that i'm aware of that did that noah no there, there isn't in fact most people thought it was going to break up and we were going to suddenly start moving up very fast and and it's on the screen right here we showed it earlier but here's the here's the full screen that you you gave us here november 1 and here's the key part. Bitcoin could suddenly break below the $19,000 support line and crash into November 8th. So that is, there it is right there. We all read that on November 1st. We actually read it back in October as well. So you nailed it, Bo. Uh, it, it, absolutely incredible. If people want to get that, I need to wrap up this interview because you're on Switzerland time and I know it's getting late there. So I, I want to bring this to a close. But if people want to find out what's happening next on this chart, what your cycles show, you've uh, you've got a couple things for them. And you always are so generous 
not only with your time logging in here with us to to chat while while it's nighttime over there in Switzerland. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. And we also appreciate that you always put a discount code on the screen here uh, if people want to get this. And you always tell people, if you want to find out my cycles, I have a service for that. If you want to get the exact detail, the Bo does updates every couple of days. You get a new newsletter that has a new update. So if you want to get that, he's uh, you go to gold2024cast.com, and he's going to give you 50% off. If you want to log in and try it, you put in the promo code WLT49, WLT49. That's going to give you 50% off. And and you can try it. And all of the old newsletters are in there. So if you want to see and double check, and if you want to see what what all this other language here says, because we have to be fair to the people that have paid. That's why Bo's blocked this out. But if you want to read the rest of that, they're all in there. He doesn't delete anything. All the old historical newsletters are in there that you can go back and see what he's been saying. You can verify that what we're telling you is is exactly what he said. Uh, so that's where you go. You go to Gold Twenty Twenty Forecast, and then he also has. I know every time we do an interview with Bo, we, I get people that say, hey, I, I get this. I, I see it. I want to learn crypto. I want to be in it. I can see that this is where things are going, but I don't even know how to start. So a while ago, Bo actually took some time and, and went back to the drawing board and he said, I, I've got to create a program or a school to show people how to do this if they don't know even step one of where to get started. So he put together the Easy Crypto School and you can find that right at easycryptoschool.com. And uh, he's got, it's it's really uh, easy to understand. He takes you step-by-step step of literally every button you click on, every site you go to, which ones are safe, which ones are not, what you should avoid, what you should trust, how to, how to buy your first crypto, how to transfer it, how to get it into safe storage. And he's also going to give you a discount on that. But, uh, same code, WLT49, 50% off. So, Bo, we thank you for always giving us uh, and the listeners here a discount. I know a lot of people take advantage of that. And uh, I I appreciate it, and I know everybody else does too. So thank you. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you. We're at the end of the slides. I'm gonna give you the last word as always. We're watching for some very big dates, and uh, go ahead and take us out. Give us the last word. No, I appreciate you having me here again. Uh, all I want to tell you know you yourself and the viewers is we are at an incredible, incredible, important time point in our world. We are literally about to witness historic events, one of the greatest move of God's spirit ever in the history of the world. And so November is expected to be an incredibly powerful and important time point. Uh, we're at day and hour here. This is so incredible. Whatever happens, how scary things might look, because no one knows how this is going to play out. So as scary as things might look or will look, fear not because God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are in complete control. The victory is ours. We've already won. That's perfect. That is a message that we support, and that's why we love having Bo on the show. So Bo, thank you for ending us with that message. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Noah. God bless. Thank you.